Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we have a really fun and simple tutorial for those of you who are just getting started with customizing your Wix website with code. And what we're going to be doing is creating a unique kind of selection tags where only one tag can be selected at a time. So if you add the selection tags element to your Wix website by default, then you can go ahead and select as many tags as you want. But in some scenarios, you might want the user to only be able to select one tag. And in that case, we can develop something like this, where you see that only one tag can be selected at a time. And we're going to be doing that with a few lines of Velo code. So if you want to learn how to do all that and more, let's get started. So to get started, the first thing we're going to want to do is to add in the selection tags. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here to add elements. And then I'm just going to go ahead and look for selection tags. If I'm not mistaken, it should be under input. Uh, if you don't see inputs here, you might need to turn on dev mode. Um, otherwise, uh, if you don't see it, you can also try searching over here. So selection tags. And I'm just going to drag in this first one that we have here, uh, these blue selection tags. And it comes by default with a bunch of selection tags. And I also have the option if I want to connect to CMS. So I have these tags uh, populated by collection data. And I can also populate these technically by code. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the default tags that we have here. And this technique that I'm going to show you should work regardless of how you're choosing to populate the tags in the selection tag. So whether you're doing it manually using the manage choices, um, or if you're connecting to CMS, or if you're doing it by code. So now that we have the selection tags on our canvas in the editor, we're ready to start hopping into the IDE, the Velo IDE, and to start coding our solution. Uh, before we do that, I just want to stress that although I am currently in the Wix editor, or the classic Wix editor, everything I'm going to show you now can be done in Wix Studio as well. Things might look a little different in terms of where you find them and how you drag the element in, but the coding should be exactly the same. Um, so if you don't see your IDE over here on the bottom, then you're going to want to make sure that you have dev mode or in studio code mode on uh, just by turning it on right over here. and what we're going to do first is we're going to make sure that we have a, an ID for our selection tags that is really easy for us to understand and find in our code. So at the moment, I only have one selection tags, and this is just for a demo. So selection tags is pretty clear. I can get rid of the one because we only really have one selection tags here. Um, but if I had multiple selection tags or if I wanted to be extra clear on this project, maybe I would call it um, you know, selection tags, genres, or something, just because I have here, you know, classics, memoirs, historical fiction, or whatnot, just to be super clear on what the element that we're coding for is. And now what we're going to do is we're going to want to, as I explained in the introduction, we're going to want to program this selection tags so that it can only facilitate the selection of one tag. So before I do that, let me just go ahead and go into preview mode to show you how the behavior works by default. I'm guessing if you're in this tutorial, then you kind of already know what this is going to look like, but just in case. Um, so at the moment, you can see here that I think they were all selected. I think blue means selected, but you can see here that I have no limit as to how many I can select. And what we're going to try and achieve here is really allow only one selection at a time. So that means if I have comedy selected and I click classics, then comedy will be deselected. Okay, so let me head back into the editor here. And I'm just going to change this as well to make sure that none of them are selected by default. Let's see over here. Select by default. Okay, so it's a little counterintuitive, but when it's just blue like that, that means it's not selected. And when it's clicked and it's kind of white with the blue border, that means that it is selected. Okay, I know I would probably have designed it the other way if I was designing it from scratch, but I don't want to waste time on design stuff. So just have in mind that that's how it works. Um, so before we actually build the functionality, I want to show you what it looks like in the code when you select a new tag for the selection tags. 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get rid of all this boilerplate code over here. And I'm going to build a new function. So there's going to be a function and it's going to be handle selection tags change. Okay, and this is a function that we're going to soon add to an event listener for the tags that is going to run every time that we make some kind of change to the selection tags. Uh, and what I want to do here is we're going to have an event parameter that's automatically given to this function. And I'm going to say here that const value for the selection tags, or I could even call this if we want, let's say tags, is equal to event.target.value. Okay, and just for reference, this is pretty much the equivalent of saying um, selection tags element dot value. Okay, so these two things are equivalent. This is something that we're only going to have inside a function that's running as a callback for an event. Okay, so um, you could have easily wrote this as well, but I'm going to write it like this. And the next thing I want to do is just to log our tags. So console.log tags and tags. And the last thing we need to do for this to work is just to append it to the event listener. So we're going to select the selection tags here inside of the on ready. And I'm going to add here an on change event. And I'm going to put our callback function here, uh, handle selection tags change. Okay, so now whenever we make a change to the selection tags by either selecting or deselecting tags, we should see in our log, in our developer logs, the value of whatever the selection tags is, and we'll understand what that value is in a moment. Okay, so here I am in preview mode, and you'll notice here that in preview mode, we have on the bottom uh, this developer console, which is where we can view logs that we put into our code, like the console.log. Uh, I'll make a note that depending on what you're developing, uh, it may be worth going to your live site to take a look at the actual developer tool logs for your browser. Um, specifically for this tutorial, there shouldn't be any difference between what we see here in the developer console and the live site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of these tags. And as I do that, you can see here that we have the log that we put in. So just the string tags, and this is the actual value of the ta uh, selection tags element. Uh, so let me just select a few more just so you can get a better idea of what's going on here. And you can see here that now uh, each time we add something in, it adds it to an array. So an array is like a list of data. Um, it's created by square brackets with items with commas in between. And you can see here that every time we add a tag, it adds something to the array. And every time we remove something, it removes it from the array. So now we only have classics here left. The important thing to note here is that it adds the new thing, the new tag that we select always at the end of the array. Okay, and this is going to be the key for what we're developing. Um, so here now you can see that I only have classics here in the array. Maybe I'll bring this up a little bit so you can see better. So here I only have classics in the array. And if I add in mysteries, then you can see here that mysteries is now the last item in the array. And if I add in novels, then novels is the last item in the array. Okay, so that is going to be the key to the solution that we're going to develop. And now that we have that understanding, let's head back into the code editor in order to implement our solution. Okay, so now here back in the editor, uh, what we're going to do essentially is with the understanding that these tags are all the values where the most recent selection is at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the last item in the array, the most recent selection, and then assign that as the value of our selection tags. Okay, so essentially, we're going to take the entire array of the values, which at any point should have at most two, and then take the last one and reassign it so that there's only one value for our selection tags. And I think it'll become much more clear as we do it. So let's hop in. Um, so to get the last tag, I'm going to say here const 
last or let's say even newest newest selection you can call things whatever you want i often as you can see change names as i'm going uh, just because i think of something that i think would be a little better a little more clear uh, newest selection equals to tags which is an array and we're going to want to select the last tag so to get the last tag one technique for doing that is to get the entire array's length and subtract one. And the reason for this is because the index of arrays starts from zero, uh, whereas the length starts from one. So if we have an array that has three items, then the length is going to be three, but the index of the last item is going to be two. Um, so that's why I'm doing it like this. And once we have that newest selection, all we need to do is reassign it to our selection tags. Uh, dot value equals to newest selection and uh, that should do the trick okay so super super simple um, so let me go ahead back into preview mode just to show you what this looks like now okay so here we are in preview mode and let's test out the code that we wrote and see if it's working as we expect so I'm going to go ahead and select historical fiction and novels and I already see that it's not exactly working. Um, so you see here, these are all selected now, but what we wanted to achieve was that only one would be selected at a time. Uh, if I open the developer console, I don't see any errors here. Whereas if this was on the live site, it is possible that I would see certain errors here. Um, you can also open up the console logs inside of the editor. I just find it a little hard to use sometimes because it's cluttered with a lot of other things that are not really related to the running of the site, uh, just because there's a lot going on inside of the Wix editor. Um, but if we uh, take a look over here, um, then we can see that there are some errors here, and these errors actually help us understand what's going on. And I purposely leave these debugging sessions in the tutorial because I think that a, you're highly likely to encounter something similar as you develop this. And B, uh, I think it deepens the understanding of what we're doing and how our code works. Uh, so here you can see that we have this error over here. So Wix code SDK error, uh, the value parameter that is passed to the value method cannot be the value mysteries. Okay, um, so let me head back into the editor and try and clarify together what the issue is and how we can fix it. Okay, so here back inside of the editor, inside of our code IDE, um, let's take a look at what we wrote and try and understand that within the context of the error that we got. So we're getting the newest selection, okay? So a specific item from the array of tags. And then what I try to do is assign that to the value of the selection tags. This is most likely where we got that error that the value cannot be mysteries or any of the other tags that we selected. And the reasoning behind this is that essentially those tags, if they're singled out individually, are strings, okay? They're text within the array. And if I try to assign just one of those to the selection tags, we have a problem because the value of the selection tags needs to be an array. Okay, so remember here that we got the value of the tags over here and we got an array. So just in the way that we got an array, we need to assign an array. And the fix for this is really simple. All we need to do is just take this newest selection and put it inside of an array, just like that. So now that I think that I've implemented the fix, let's head back to preview mode and see if this actually helped. Okay, so back in preview mode, hopefully for the last time, and let's go ahead and test our solution. So I'm going to select here historical fiction, and then I'm going to select novels. And now you can see that as soon as I select novels, historical fiction goes back to being unselected. Okay, and this continues throughout our entire process. And also if we take a look here at the developer logs, we can see that inside of the tags value, we have at most two at any time. So we have, because remember we're logging the tags before we implement the solution. So we always have just the previous one and the new one. Okay, that's always what's happening here, one after the other. Uh, and this is a successful implementation of the 
solution. I'm just going to head back into the editor for some closing notes and pointers uh, before we roll uh, wrap up this tutorial. Okay, so just some closing notes here. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that here you can see that I decided to assign the value with the by selecting the actual selection tags element. But this could easily just have been the same as what I did up here. So instead of using selection tags dot value, I could have done event dot target uh, dot value. Okay, because so event dot target is essentially the equivalent of selection tags. And the advantage of doing it in this manner is that it makes our code more reusable. So for example, if we had multiple uh, selection tag element, okay, then I could use this same function with all of them. Um, so let's say if I just copy paste this, and it's going to show errors, because I don't actually have multiple selection tags. But if I had selection tags, and selection tags two, and I wanted them both to have the same functionality of only being able to select one, then I could use this function and it would just be a lot more uh, reusable. There are other ways to do this as well, but I just thought it was important to point that out uh, before uh, wrapping up. So uh, with that, we have achieved our goal of having selection tags that can only have one of the tags selected at a time. I hope this uh, helps you with your project. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, ideas of tutorials that you want to see, um, you think you have a better way to do this and you want to share it, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Um, if you have any more complex questions, you can also head over to our forum at thewixwiz.com. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this on a weekly basis, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Thank you